Welcome back to this series where I take you along as we renovate our 1970s home. If you've been following along, then you know that we ripped out our appliances, the vinyl cabinets, the linoleum, <laughs> this wallpaper, and most importantly, raised the dated drop ceiling. We are now moved in and using this kitchen every day, and I want to share with you what I wish I would have known before starting this project and my five regrets. Hi guys, welcome to my brand new kitchen. So it's it is definitely not completed. I'd say it's about 50%. I will insert a before picture because this place has come so far. 50% might be a little generous. We still have to like paint, do the backsplash, get our countertops, do the molding, get a hood. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few more things, but we are at a point where most of the like expensive things are done. And I want to share with you guys the regrets that we have. I have about five regrets as well as a lot of things that i love about this kitchen and the decisions that we've made but this is the video that i wish i would have watched before starting a diy kitchen remodel so let me first show you what i absolutely love about this kitchen then i will share with you guys what i regret so right behind me is the first thing that i will point out and that is the cabinets going all the way to the ceiling before they were just like the short ones the storage that you get when it goes all the way to the ceiling and just the look of it it really raises the ceiling i mean we did raise the ceiling in here uh, like a foot and a half so it just makes it a lot bigger now i have to show you what you are propped up on right now because this is probably my favorite part this this i absolutely love so we brought our sink it was off centered we centered it in the middle of this window and we got the biggest farmhouse sink that they had this is called an apron front sink and it has been just amazing so far no scratches or anything but that is the concern with these sinks that are the this is cast iron, I believe, and then it has like a coating on top. What I've read is that as long as you don't put like knives directly down in there, it should be fine. The whole style is like old world kitchen, and so we kind of want it to look old and everything, so I won't be complaining. I know I could get the grate, but those are a pain to clean under. They always just collect stuff under them, and it's just gross. This thing that I love is yet to be done, which is this hood. We decided to go with the DIY one, which we're gonna do because they are super expensive to buy like a really beautiful hood. The other option was to get the microwave there. Instead of doing that, we put the microwave under the cabinet here. I don't know how to model this, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is a microwave. It's in this like box in here. You can get different size box. We went to the biggest one so we have a uh, like full size microwave and everything. I think some family was concerned that I wanted it under the counter just because of kids like pressing the buttons and stuff. But so far we haven't had any issues. I don't know. My kids, they, they know boundaries, I guess. So hopefully we'll be fine with that. I just really did not want it taking up counter space and I really wanted to save room for a beautiful hood. So that's what we did. I totally would have forgotten this, but since I'm right here, this is one of my favorite things was leaving room for this tiny little cabinet. Let me move you over. Well, it is the most convenient thing ever for cutting boards, cookie sheets, that kind of stuff. I'm trying to like crop out as much of like the mess of moving as I can over here, but this is our pantry over here. I absolutely love what we did in here the it had very like sagging shelves and stuff in there so we did take those out they were also covered in i think four layers of contact paper that was like disintegrating and so we went in and put new um new shelves in there and they are a little bit more deep so that there's more space but i need to figure out a way to organize it better because because they're so deep it's hard to actually find stuff in there. It's like, you're like climbing through there. So let me know if you guys wanna see a pantry organizing video, because that's definitely in need. We don't have our handles on yet. We only have it on this one here. And this is not our countertops. So <laughs> just wanna address that. This is plywood. We're still waiting for our countertops. They will, I think, come in in six weeks or so. This is what I am deciding between. What would you go with? So <laughs> they might look the exact same on camera, but this one is shiny and dirty and then this one is matte it's like a concrete finish and this is the soapstone like pattern in quartz so it is much more durable than actual soapstone soapstone you have to oil like every three weeks or so it's like this insane process so definitely was not going to do that and the soapstone kind of has a little bit more of a matte finish i think when I've looked at pictures of the real thing. So that's why I want to go with the mat. <laughs> you ready for me to spill the tea? Is what they say. My five regrets in this kitchen. So pretty much these come down to things that we could have 
avoided, unfortunately. Um, but this is our first time doing this. It, I mean, we didn't build these cabinets. We had them built for us kind of custom through Home Depot. And so the most important thing that we have learned though is making sure our measurements are correct. So that might sound like obvious, but for some reason we were off in two of our spots and this caused two of our regrets. So this back wall behind me, we were off somehow six inches. We don't understand if it was really our mistake or like a mistake with the kitchen designer we were working with at Home Depot. We, it's still a mystery. So what that meant though, is that we had to reorder the two cabinets on the end of this. And it also squished our upper cabinets together more so that we won't have as much space around the range hood. We did have to reorder and they were able to give us our money back for those cabinets that we had to replace. But I'm not sure how it's gonna look really next to the hood, them being like right next to it. So stay tuned to see how that goes. Second problem would also come down to measurement pretty much, but it prevented us from doing something else, which was on the wall that you were on right now. It prevented us from doing open shelving. Now, we might still be able to do open shelving, but they are going to be like four inch open shelves and I haven't decided if that is worth it. So what happened is we measured the right hand side of the wall next to the sink as much bigger than it was somehow. <laughs> Well, I don't understand how like six inches bigger like that was that was how much we were off and so we would have had equal distance between that cabinet and the cabinet to the left to put in 12 inches of open shelving but we did not we only had four inches on one side and then 16 on the other side so we went in and added another 12 inch cabinet so that we would at least have four and four and it was even so at least that worked out but it would have been much nicer to have like more open shelves. I have a crazy idea. Let me know if you guys think this is insane. What if I took this cabinet to the right off, put that in our laundry room because we wanna put new cabinetry in there and then had just one entire side open, open shelves. It wouldn't be symmetrical, but I kind of think I would like that. I don't know. Let me know what you guys would do. Next regret is not adding spacers. So I thought that it wouldn't be a big deal to not have spacers in between my cabinets. I could just put my cabinets next to each other, all next to each other, and it would be just fine. What I have noticed though is next to the oven, next to the wall, we have some issues because what happens is when you have a door open or a drawer open, you then can't open the oven or you can't even open this drawer to my right here, which is right next to a wall. I should have added a spacer in there instead of trying to get the biggest cabinet that I could, because then I could open this drawer much easier instead of it sometimes bumping that left-hand side wall. I think there's going to be a DIY fix in the near future of how we can get that to not bang the wall. Regret number four, I think we're on now, and that is to check which way each door will open. Let me show you what I mean. These cabinets are center open. <laughs> Y'all don't need to see the mess in there. Actually, that one's probably fine. But this one is only one door. Now, I would have done it this way opening if I could have because I have all my spices in here, so that makes more sense, right? So make sure that you ask them which way the hinge is or on. Okay, regret number five, this is definitely five, I just checked my list, is not planning our lighting a little bit better. So we have one light that's in the center, like a recessed light, and then we have one pendant over the sink in the window and then two pendants over this like peninsula where this will be like a jut out and then there will be bar stools under there. But the lighting here, we centered on this peninsula, like we taped it out and centered it nicely, but wasn't thinking about the doors here opening. When you open up this door, I am pretty sure that's gonna hit our pendant light. So we're just gonna have to be careful that it doesn't swing open, but that would have been something to really think about because those are things that happen like first. I mean, we, we could move that, but that is a 
big deal and it's just not exactly worth it. But you don't make those mistakes that I did. Let me give you a little list of everything that we have coming so that you guys can come back if you're interested in seeing any more of this renovation. So handles, <laughs> we need to put our handles in. We've gotten one in. Next up is the backsplash. We also need to paint the walls. It's still just primed in here. We need to add crown molding around the top of everything in here. We need to add our under cabinet lighting. We need to add our toe kicks. Get our countertops, obviously. Those will be delivered in about six weeks. And you know, I wish that I would have known that that was gonna take six weeks. I mean, but you can't get it measured until you have all of your cabinets in. So it does take a little bit of time. We need to obviously get lighting in here. And then we need to do our DIY hood. And what else do we have to do? What else do we have to do? Oh, we have to give each other hugs, lots of hugs. So that's all I've got for you guys today. If you have any questions about what we have done in this kitchen or our house, please let me know. Someone recently asked a good question, which is like, why are we like making this house like more custom if it's like a flipper house? Well, I have an answer for that. If you guys want to know, let me know down below and I can do like a sit down question answer, but. <laughs> We're not going to get into it today because we're going to go play some trains. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you next time. I know my videos have not been coming out on Sundays. They've been like all over the place. And that's just, that's just the way it is right now. We'll get on a routine again maybe sometime. So I hope you all have a blessed one. Bye. <laughs> Honey. Honey. You're so funny. Yeah.